Okay, here I am again uh, working on the JSOP uh, EK Civic and I want to show you a few things about how to uh, do your first checks of your uh, Speedwino or Mega Squirt or whatever standalone um, ECU you're using. So uh, today I'm going to talk you through uh, the things that I check and uh, hopefully this will be helpful to you. Okay, so here is my Civic which is a 98 uh, Civic EK hatchback and it has a 3 liter V6 from a Honda Accord which is a J30A5 and it does have a 6 speed manual uh, this was originally a 1.6 liter D16 automatic uh, car uh, so lots of changes had to happen to get it to this point so I'm finally at a point where I can start checking uh, all of the things associated with the new ECU. So if you're running a stock ECU, yeah, skip most of this stuff. But if you're running a aftermarket standalone, uh, especially if it's a Mega Squirt or a Speedwino where you've done a lot of the wiring yourself and it's not just a plug and play type deal, um, I'm going to talk about the things that I like to check uh, to verify that things are that things are good. So the first thing I do, well, long before this, I did a, uh, I went through the, the original Accord wiring harness and made sure all of my outputs were connected to the Speedwino correctly. So I did that sitting on my, you know, sitting in my kitchen table um, several evenings over the winter because it's cold in Wisconsin during the winter. So it's not much fun to be in the garage and wiring is much more fun indoors. Um, so the first thing I usually do is pull the spark plugs out. Pull the coils, pull the spark plugs. Now this has a this has a three wire uh, coil on plug. Six of them, one for each cylinder. Um, it's a Honda and a lot of the three wire ones are the same. It's got a, it should have a power a, oops, a power, a ground in the middle, and then the end should be a, a trigger wire that gets a 5-volt signal off of the ECU. Um, so you can test that by putting a multimeter uh, in the pin, you know, the, in the pin for the uh, trigger wire and uh, the other side of the multimeter to ground, and you should be able to turn on the output to the ECU and test to make sure that you're getting five volts there. You can also test the power and ground, right? So that's the first thing you want to test. Um, and then if you have individual drivers for the injectors, which I don't, they're paired, or coils, I mean, they're paired on this car. Um, you can check to make sure the, uh, the output you're intending gets to the correct coil um, before you even hook anything up. You got the spark plugs out at this point, you can crank the engine and it's not going to start. You have no fuel pressure, it's not going to start. You don't want to start the engine at this point because you haven't checked everything. I know it's really tempting to put the ECU in, don't care about the sensors, what they're doing, uh, don't check anything, just start cranking it and trying to start it. Well, you're going you're gonna to break your starter doing that. Um, and you're, you're asking for trouble in my opinion. <clears throat> So there's a handful of sensors that you need to make sure are correct before you, uh, before you move, before you move forward. But I talked about checking the coils. You can make sure you get the correct signals uh, when you put them out in uh, out from the ECU, and then you can check the injectors as well. You can actually hear those click. Um, you could unplug the ones that are you're not intending to activate, and one at a time. Make sure they click, make sure they click. No fuel pressure, you're not cranking the engine. So I'll show you sort of how you do that with the Speedwino setup. So this is Tuner Studio. Uh, this looks very similar to what you'd get with, um, with Mega Squirt. So here I'm going to hardware testing. Test output hardware. Enable test mode. Okay, test mode is enabled. I can I can turn on the injector or the uh, 
coil outputs from here. I can give them a 50% duty cycle. So I'll do that. Now remember I have no coils connected. If you turn on a coil and let it just sit there, it's going to burn up. So don't do that. Okay. Got to make sure I've got my ignition on. Anyways, so this is how you how you put a output to the each pair of coils in my case, and then for the injectors, I just turned on fifty percent duty cycle. You can see I've got a light flashing inside the Speedwino case. If I go outside. You can hear that pair of injectors cycling. Um, like I said, unplug them one at a time with no fuel pressure. Test that. If you have fuel pressure when you're doing this, you're going to flood the engine. Don't do that. Same for the next pair. Okay. Same for the next pair. Okay. And by going through that, you can test everything before you even start to crank the engine. Now the next thing you want to do is you want to make sure that you have uh, reasonable readings on all of the on all of the sensors that are showing up here on your default dashboard. So you need the throttle position sensor. That's not a sensor. That's not a sensor. Engine manifold air pressure. You need a value for that. You need to have something that makes sense before you try to start the engine. In that air temp, you need to have something that makes sense before you try to start the engine. Coolant temp. Don't try to start the engine without a, a working coolant temp sensor. I know it's really tempting, but get all that stuff sorted out beforehand. Um, in this case, the I'll actually show you some stuff here in case you're a J-Series person interested in this. Uh, I do have a working throttle position sensor. See? Go from 0 to 100. And if you get something else, or it goes backwards, check your wiring. It's not right. Um, inlet air temp. It's cold today. 41 seems about right. It's 35 outside, and it's been sitting in the garage. Coolant temp sensor. 41 seems about right. The engine hasn't run yet, so they should be about the same, right? Um, the MAP sensor, 100 kPa is, 101 or 100 kPa is uh, what you should expect to see when the engine's not running. Um, all of your fuel tables and spark tables are based off of uh, basically throttle position, not even throttle position, mostly MAP and RPM. So if you don't have a functioning MAP, uh, don't, even, don't even move forward. Don't try to do anything with it. Okay, so I'll show you here. Tools. So say you say you got in here and all this stuff looked crazy. And, you know, these don't look right. This doesn't look right. This doesn't look right. Um, see, I haven't, haven't cranked the engine at all yet. Don't do that. Until you know everything else is correct. So calibrate TPS. So as you can see here, with a, at zero, you hit get current. That sets the 0% TPS. Then you give it Full, full throttle, set the TPS, that sets the range of the TPS. Throttle position sensor. Oh, let's see what else we've got here. Calibrate pressure sensors. I happen to know from my K-Series project that the uh, standard Honda uh, pressure sensors are scaled like this to get 100 kPa at uh, regular atmospheric atmospheric pressure so they'll actually read up to 181 kPa which is like I don't know what's that 10 psi or something like that so the J series uses the same scaling on the pressure on the map sensor as the K series does uh, calibrate temperature sensors hey look at this this looks familiar the Honda K series and J series temperature sensors use the same uh, Bosch um, setting as a Saab does. So use those. 
So this is a coolant temp sensor. I bet the air temp sensor is scaled the same. Yes, it is. Look at that. Okay, so I got... Once you, If you have to change those, write it to the controller. Now you're in a position where you've got... <clears throat> Uh, you know, good TPS setting. Um, you could apply a vacuum to the map sensor if you wanted, just to verify that it's making sense. Um, but you're now finally ready. Once you've checked uh, coil outputs, uh, injector outputs, make sure you've got uh, correct readings here. Now you can crank the engine. You've got no spark plugs in. You've got no fuel pressure. You don't need either of those things to do this test. You shouldn't have either of those things to do this test. Now if I have a good uh, crank position sensor and my triggering is all set up, I should see some engine RPM on that upper left gauge. Look at that. So it sensed that we were cranking. Uh, you see the right here this uh, no sync should turn green. That means you're getting a good signal from the crank position sensor. So it's reading RPM and it's got full sync. After the delay that you have set in here, it's going to start firing the coils and the injectors. Um, so if you have uh, fuel and you have the coils in there, it's going to try to start the engine. You don't want to do that yet, right? That's right, you don't. <clears throat> okay, the next thing we need to check is we need to get the timing light out, which I'm not going to show you because there's lots of other videos showing you how to set ignition timing. Uh, let's see if I have a flashlight so you can see what I'm talking about. Here we go. So before you actually try to start the engine, you're going to do nothing else until you set the ignition timing. Do not just crank it with unknown ignition offsets. And that, the ignition offset being uh, where the computer uh, is reading the missing tooth or whatever the, the base position on your crank position sensor is located at. So you need to set an offset in there to show it where Top dead center on cylinder one, which is over here, is on the compression stroke. So right down here you can see a little pointer. You see him right there? There's going to also be a pointer on the, or there's going to be a notch on the um, crank pulley. Now I'm going to either have an assistant crank the engine, or I'm going to get my little, uh, my little button to crank the starter. And I'm going to sit here with my timing light. And I'm going to aim it down there, and I'm going to verify that when I'm commanding zero during crank, do zero degrees ignition timing during cranking, that I've actually got zero degrees on the damper. So I'm going to adjust the ignition t uh, offset, which I'll show you in here, until I get uh, the physical timing that the that the ECU is putting out to match the actual timing that I'm commanding from the from the ECU. So where do I go? I go to Spark, Spark Settings. That's not where I go. But here's where you'd go to lock the timing. I would lock it at zero. Or if you have a notch at 10 degrees on your damper, set it at 10 degrees. I like to do zero just to make sure. Let's see, Settings. Trigger setup. So here you have to enter a trigger angle in degrees. Do you see that? Until you've cranked the engine with no spark plugs in it, um, or at least no fuel pressure, do not try to start the engine. You need to verify physically the timing here, and you have to have the correct number in there so that this, so that the ECU knows where it's where it's putting that number one spark out. If you don't do that, it's it's not going to start. You're just going to sit there cranking it, cranking it, cranking it, and it's never going to start. You might get lucky. You might get it to sputter. You might get it to backfire. But 
you're you're not doing it the correct way. You need to verify everything first. Um, I know it's really tempting to uh, just go in there and start cranking the thing and hope for the best, but don't do that. If you have an ignition offset from someone else, uh, so you know someone else that used, let's see this one here. So you know somebody else that has a J-Series with a Speedwino on it, and they've modified the trigger wheel the same as I have, and they give you a value of 55 here or 280 or whatever number they give you. Do not just put that in there and start cranking the engine. Go in there, put the number in, and then verify it on the damper with a timing light. If you don't have a timing light, you can't do this. Um, I've had a few people reach out to me, and it seems like uh, commonly the problem is people will just crank the engine and hope for the best and wonder why it's not working. Well, you have to figure everything out. You have to fix everything that's wrong before you can move forward. Um, not saying this, you know, in this tone to berate people, but I want to emphasize how important it is uh, to make sure everything's correct before you try to start the engine, at least to the best of your ability. Um, also, you need to have some basic tools if you're doing this kind of thing. You need to have a multimeter. I have this cheesy uh, laying clamp-on multimeter that was broken several years ago. The clamp was broken off. I, I epoxied it back together, have been using it ever since. Uh, I've also got one of these cheap DSO-138 oscilloscopes. These are like 30 bucks on eBay, assembled. Don't even get the kit, just buy the assembled one. Um, then if you have any issues, you can see what the signals are actually doing. You need to be able to verify that you have power everywhere. You need to have power. Um, hopefully that was helpful. If you have any questions, let me know. Um, it's not really that hard to get all this stuff set up, but you do have to be patient, and it's easy to get ahead of your skis. I've wrecked starters myself. Um, I've pulled my hair out for extended periods because I wasn't doing things in the correct order. I was just uh, plugging things in and hoping for the best, and that does not work. You're, you're going to spend three, four, five times as much time on it uh, as you would otherwise. Um, and you need to make sure that all your wiring is correct before you try to do anything. And if you get it, if you get it to a point where you think everything's correct, check it on the car. Make sure your, your injectors and stuff are, uh, are wired correctly. Okay, so this car is not super far from starting. All I need to do is finish the exhaust. You can see I'm making a nice pie cut exhaust there. I do have a cooling system in it. It's using the stock Civic half radiator, which will probably work for my purposes at least. Um, heater hoses are in, uh, fuel lines are in. I haven't pressurized the new fuel system yet. But this thing is getting close to running. It's not getting close to being done, but uh, once I can get it to run and drive, that'll be, that'll be pretty good. So hopefully this was a helpful video. Um, I wish somebody would have made this video for me and said things in uh, a straightforward and frank fashion so I didn't waste so much time trying to figure this stuff out. Um, if you're new to electronics and um, especially if you're new to cars and projects like this and you're used to just plugging stuff in and you're trying to save some money by building your own ECU, you know, hopefully this will help. Everything's a learning Everything's got a learning curve, so you need to be patient with yourself. And as you find problems or things you don't know, do the research and figure it out. You'll be all the better for it.